What do you think is common amongst all these things displayed on the screen? Well, all of them run on batteries. Yes, even that car, that's an electric car and it runs on a battery. We often forget that our devices have batteries inside, right? Until we are haunted by the screen. And then we get reminded about the battery and how we have to charge it, isn't it? Well, let's try to understand in this video a little bit about the basic idea of how a battery works. Okay, now let me remind you of one of the most fundamental principles of physics called the principle of energy conservation. This principle states that energy cannot be created or destroyed, but can be converted from one form to another. And a battery does just exactly that. A battery converts chemical energy, it stores chemical energy within itself, and then when required, it converts that into electrical energy. And this entire process is called discharging. And this is what it looks like. You start off with a battery full of chemical energy and you slowly use up that chemical energy and are left with an empty battery. No chemical energy here, right? And some batteries allow us to do the reverse as well. They allow us to convert electrical energy into chemical energy. These are called rechargeable batteries. And this process is called charging. I'm sure you do it every day. Right? We start off with a battery that is empty and then we charge it. Basically, we fill it up with chemical energy until it reaches its status of being full. Right? We do this every day with our phones. We start off with, uh, say, a full battery and we discharge it. Once it's empty, we charge it up again and then we discharge and charge and we do this all over and over again. Right? Okay, great. Let me talk a little bit more about discharging or using a battery. So let's say this is our cell or our battery. And uh, let me also throw a few terms at you. This end of our battery is called the negative terminal. This end is called the positive terminal. This metal cap here and this metal cap here. Okay. And we have a potential difference across these two terminals. That potential difference is measured in volts. And the potential difference typically across, say, a AA battery is 1.5 volts. You don't need to memorize it. It'll be written on the battery, just, just for info. Okay, let's say I want to power up a bulb using this battery. How do I do that? I need to take a wire from the negative terminal, connect it to the bulb, take another wire from the positive terminal and connect it to the bulb and the bulb close. Okay, as simple as that. If you haven't done this ever, I would suggest that you go try it out. Just a small reminder again of what's happening here. Chemical energy that's stored in the battery is being converted by the battery into electrical energy. The bulb then further converts it into light and heat, right? Okay, great. Let me show you a few pictures of batteries. So these are different, different cells, different batteries. Uh, they come in different shapes and sizes. Each has its own use. This is used in cars and trucks and inverters. This is used in, uh, this is used to power small lanterns on push carts and stuff like that. This is used in microphones. These are used in uh, hearing aids. These are used in torches and all sorts of things like remotes and a lot of different varieties of applications, right? Great. Now, all of these batteries are, uh, you know, they can be segregated into two types. And those two types are basically single cell batteries and multiple cell batteries. We'll come to that. What exactly is a cell would be your question, right? Well, a cell is the smallest unit that converts chemical energy into electrical energy. Now, these batteries have just a single cell. So this has one cell, this has one cell, this one has one cell, whereas these batteries have multiple cells. What does that mean? How, how can I imagine that? Let me show you. Well, uh, this, let's say, is a multiple cell battery. This basically has a lot of smaller cells inside it. That's all. As simple as that. Now, I'll talk a little bit more about connecting multiple cells. Now, this way of connecting, this method of connecting multiple cells is called the series method or the series arrangement. Now, it's nothing complicated. What we need to do is we need to connect the positive end of this cell to the negative end of the next cell. Positive end of this cell to the negative end of the next cell, right? And this kind of connection is called a series connection. Why would we want to do such a connection? Well, if the potential difference across each of these cells is 1.5 volts, then 
it's interesting to note that the potential difference across the entire battery of three cells would be 4.5 volts. Now you may ask, well, wait a minute, where does this 4.5 number come from? It's very simple. Basically, the potential difference across this entire battery is the sum of the potential differences across the individual batteries. Right? I'd encourage you to pause and think about it for a moment. Okay, great. Now, at times in remotes and in different toys, you may have seen batteries being connected like this. Is this also a series connection? Yes, this is also a series connection. Let me show you how. Let's say we have, we label these batteries. Let's say this is one, this is two, three. And what we're going to do is we're going to connect the positive end of the first battery, the positive terminal of the first battery to the negative terminal of the second battery, right? Remember, that's what we did in the previous case, right? And what we do next is connect the positive end of the, the positive terminal of the second battery to the negative terminal of the third battery. There you go. Now you get a large battery where this is the positive terminal and this is the negative terminal of our larger battery. Right? And you would have seen this arrangement in remotes and toys, right? If you haven't noticed, I would encourage you to go and open one of your remotes and check it out. Now, batteries come not just in different shapes and sizes, but also in different, with different chemicals inside them. Like uh, they could have a lithium ion technology where you have lithium ions inside the battery or a nickel cadmium battery or a lead acid battery. There are different, you know, there are hundreds of different combinations of uh, materials which are used to make batteries. These are just a few of those popular ones. Lithium ion is popular in electronics like phones and laptops. And uh, lead acid is popular in cars, trucks, and um, you know, even in inverters. And the next video will be about how a lead acid battery works. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.